Yeah, I'm afraid to test the waters with, with TikTok too much because they seem to really not like me. I've lost, I don't know, three or four accounts at least. Mm -hmm. And usually they're for really ridiculous things. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Delulu Canoe Podcast. We are back in the canoe, and today we have a reoccurring guest. But before we throw it on over to them, I got to give credit where credit is due to my co host, my producer, Cosmo from the Cosmo Show. Hello, hello. How's it going? Good. Tired. I feel like a bum. I'm just like <laughs> growing this all out and everything. So, you're just trying a new style. Yes, yeah. I, 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 I could say that. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good yeah. thing, though. You have to try on new styles to figure out what you like and what you don't like, you know? I'm Let just me lazy. Out. I'm just lazy. <laughs> <laughs> or that too. Speaking of style, we actually brought back a style icon who currently at this moment is our best episode for Delulu Canoe. So you should go back and watch it after this. But I have with us the iconic, the vintage pinup star and the DeLorean Delulu, Carlotta Champagne. <laughs> <Yay>! <laughs> Thanks for coming back. Yeah, thanks for having me. We absolutely love and adore you. So um, we kind of want you to come back all the time. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, speaking of fashion i had to take a break i've been digging for the last two days at the valentino costume house because they're closing oh, down yeah. and i'm like oh gosh i have to get over here for the podcast <laughs> <laughs> you're just digging through clothes and you're like i, I literally gotta go. bought this skirt there today really yeah yeah i I needed something to wear over this bodysuit so Ooh, yeah i love it <laughs> it's so chic we kind of look like we're going to a funeral, though, is what I said before <laughs> a sexy we started. funeral. Like the sexiest funeral. <laughs> Leave in the comments below who you think, <laughs> whose funeral we're going to. I'm going for Kardashians. I'm going for <laughs> the Gabors, I, even the Gabors. though I'm pretty sure they're dead already. So oh. Ava or Zsa Just anybody fashionable that we like kind of fit their yeah. style today. Yeah. I don't know. I just felt like wearing something like kind of sleek because usually like when I'm around you, I feel like I am wearing like Amazon trash so i decorated my amazon trash today well no i love it it looks good thank you well speaking of feeling good i feel like especially in the internet space there's a lot happening right now that actually makes me feel kind of bad Mm -hmm. and i know you have a really like specific delulu about like the internet and how things are going so i'm I'm curious what do you want to get off your chest this week (laughs) so um i know that you and i have talked about this at length through our careers and we've been friends for a long time. Oh yeah. But this drives me absolutely bonkers. This is my Delulu for sure is Mm. these social media platforms, which I've been on since the beginning. I, I was there for MySpace. Yeah. (laughs) Oh gosh. But these websites, MySpace, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Mm -hmm. they build their platforms off of the backs of beautiful women. Of course. I mean, that's how they get their start is like you get this, beautiful model on there posting bikini pictures and all their fans come and join their website Mm -hmm. and so now instagram's got all these followers all these people and while we were the ones that brought the fans there Mm -hmm. and they wanted us there at the beginning as soon as we've built the fan base for them they start blocking us they start putting you know parental guidelines guidelines on us they tell us you can't wear this you can't look like that it's too sexual it's too this and it's not really to make it safer it's Mm -mm. it's basically just because they want to make money off of us or get rid of us because i think at the end of the day they are looking in terms of how much more valuable the website is if they can now get rid of anyone linked to adult content right um, I, I know even OnlyFans for a second had this moment where they were like, we're going to go, yeah, you know, PG and no nudity. <laughs> and I'm like, that's not going to work out too well. Mm-hmm. But from what I understand, it was because they wanted to be able to have an app in the app store. And yeah. it if they sold the company, it was worth more if it wasn't an adult linked site. Right. And obviously this didn't work out too well for OnlyFans, but a lot of these other websites like Instagram specifically and TikTok specifically, they have built their success off of our backs and then gave us the middle finger once they got that success. Mm -hmm. And it's so frustrating. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, guys wouldn't have Instagram if there weren't beautiful women on it. Like, 
I don't think guys would have it, in my personal opinion, from like five years ago. Highly doubt it. But now that there's all these women here that are promoting different things, that are bringing like their fans, their followers, like you said, to the platform, it it grew. Now Instagram is a completely different thing than it was even two years ago. Mm-hmm. It's become a shopping platform. Same thing with TikTok. It's yeah. evolved, but you don't really see guys being salesmen Mm-mm. on there. It's it's not them trying to sell TikTok products or all this drop ship crap that you can buy now, which I'm guilty. I've bought a couple <laughs> things off TikTok recently, but it's so frustrating. And I 100% agree with everything that you're saying that they coax us to come in and be on this platform and mm-hmm. they promote us right away in the beginning where your, your engagement is insane and people are there and it gets you excited. And then all of a sudden, you get flagged for taking a photo with your butt. Yeah. And it's like, okay, so now now we can't do that. But guys get to do it. Mm-hmm. I've seen, uh, even my personal trainer has been sending me stories from this other content creator that he trains, which I don't, I don't want to name names or anything, but this other creator has an OnlyFans mm-hmm. and he can promote his in the stories where it says like the exact link straight to OnlyFans, but we can't. Right. Yeah, and I, another thing I've noticed is some of the people, I have a little bit of, like, insider knowledge on TikTok mm. in particular, but if somebody has a certain amount of followers, I believe it's over a million, mm-hmm. they kind of look at you differently as far as um, as policing your content. Oh, really? So, But so many of these, like, more adult creators hit a million followers when the site first launched. Right. Because they were trying to get people to join you know so all of these women who were really successful in that beginning burst kind of have uh, leniency to do things that the rest of us are not allowed to do which is really frustrating as well so I, I don't know that one is almost like a you scratched our back so now we're going to scratch your back because no one else can get away with what we're letting you do and that's oh. very much like a certain group of very successful um adult creators from the very beginning of TikTok. That makes so much sense because there's like two creators that come to mind right now that I'm like, how does that girl get to wear a bikini? And like, I I can't even wear this on TikTok. Yeah, TikTok is so strict. And people used to say it was like, oh, it's the beauty standards that it's like, oh, they they were trying to idolize like skinny women or women who are like thinner or weren't as curvy. But these two girls that I know are definitely in the same category as we are, where they're very voluptuous and curvy and they're very attractive, very beautiful women. But they get away with so much Mm -hmm. on their TikTok account where, again, I'm like fully covered, but I have a little bit of cleavage out and I would instantly be banned. Yeah. Yeah, I'm afraid to test the waters with with TikTok too much because they seem to really not like me. I've lost, I don't know, three or four accounts at least. Mm -hmm. And usually they're for really ridiculous things because my stuff is very fashion-based, so it's not always sexy. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) But it doesn't matter. They've they've flagged me for things that are just also ridiculous. Yeah, I haven't been flagged in a long time, but I definitely went through my spurt of like, I think it's seven accounts I've lost on TikTok. Damn. Yeah, I I was putting in work getting myself banned. (laughs) I love that for me. But now I can't grow to save my life. Yeah, most of us can't. Really? Yeah, I've been doing a bit better recently. Mm -hmm. I have my suspicions for why. Um, One, I think a lot of people are leaving the platform. Yep. So I think that they're trying to feed you a little bit with like, oh, we're letting people see your content. Don't leave. Yeah. Don't go away. (laughs) But I, so I suspect that. I've also switched things up a little bit. So I'm doing a lot of talking. I've been doing, you know, like tales of uh, basically a nudie model. Mm -hmm. And those have been doing pretty well. It seems like a lot of people like my weird stories and have no idea how screwed up our industry is. People have no idea what it was like doing modeling work but like per photographer basis Mm -hmm. they don't get the abuse we went through (laughs) so much abuse oof yeah yeah it's it was rough I'm dead inside now (laughs) (laughs) like you think you can hurt me some guy told me I looked fat when I was 18 so nothing will hurt me (laughs) I'm good I'm I'm built different now (laughs) 
man. Pe- people were mean and like very unintentionally with photographers. I would always get people that were, you know, thinking that they were giving you a compliment, but it was very backhanded. Or, mm-hmm. You know, they you look like one of those women from those paintings and it would be like the really overweight with oh, <laughs> no. like make the reference to yeah like, okay you're just like cool I'm like thanks Thank I, you which so is much. fine I guess but that wasn't the intent you know right like, like they were trying to say like you're beautiful and yeah. like you're like a goddess but they show us the photo of what they're comparing us to and you're just like oh no yeah so Oof. I don't know but I I think that that is probably more of what I've dealt with is a lot of backhanded compliments over the years Definitely. I actually do have a question that we'll save for Patreon. So if you're curious, someone actually had a very specific question about your, well, you have a series on TikTok. What is it called? Like Confessions of a, a, a Noodle Model? Yeah. Yeah. So somebody actually asked a very specific question. So okay. I decided to ask you that later. But I love that you're branching out into talking more on your platforms because mm-hmm. I feel like for me personally, that's really helped people see me as a person Mm -hmm. instead of like all these glamorous photos, which are great. Don't get me wrong. But I think it also just like adds to your value of like what you've been through as an artist throughout the years on these Mm -hmm. platforms. Yeah, no, I agree. I think I really had like a a shield on I'm not going to talk. I'm just going to do these trends. And they weren't doing anything for me. But also I think that it was keeping me like not connected to my base. Like they want to get to know you. So they do, but it's, it's also so hard to get rid of the shield to want to talk to people because you say the wrong thing and they'll hold it against you forever. Yeah. Like the internet is so, they're so open, but they're also unforgiving in a lot of cases. No, It's easy to get canceled and for, you know, an accidental statement or misstating, stating something. So yeah. It's scary. (laughs) It's a little scary to be vulnerable online right now. (laughs) Yeah. But yeah, I feel like I 100% agree with your Delulu on how these platforms really utilize beautiful women. Even like I would argue a lot of the big companies. It's not even utilized. It's taking advantage of. Yeah. It really is. Mm -hmm. Because they're like, yeah, we're going to just use them for what we want and then dispose of them later. Yeah. So it's not utilizing it. <laughs> it's yeah. more than that. It's it's abuse. Well, they present it as utilizing. <laughs> yeah. They're like, here, let us, we would love to work with you and love to have you on our platform. Here's a bunch of engagement. And then they turn around and stab you on the back. But I also wanted to bring up, because I agree with that so, like with my whole fiber of my being, but now I feel like it's not only on social media platforms. I would agree with like podcast circuits mm-hmm. that they now have taken to that same mold where they'll invite you to come on their show and sometimes they'll even like pay you to be on their show. But it's not because they want to help like uplift you or spread your message. It's that they want the views for their own podcast. And then they make these girls, these girls who, who do corn, most of them do and they'll come on these podcasts and then they'll expect them to do more and more risky things on a podcast and if they don't do it the episode doesn't get aired Mm. and oh go ahead well you know where they get that from right no howard stern oh howard stern would bring porn stars and like bring out like the latest toys and have them do it right there on the set he was infamous for that I didn't know that. Yeah, Did you? back in the back I, in the old school. 90s, you know, I never really listened to Stern. Mm-hmm. Um, it's unfortunate because I actually there's the movie Private Parts. I thought was quite good. It's hmm. the Howard Stern. It's the movie about him. Mm-hmm. But as a shock jock, I don't think he's a good person. Some of the things oh. he did are really disgusting. Yeah. And, um, he'd put people on the spot and then ask them horrendous things like live. The things he did to Anna Nicole Smith are particularly disgusting. Where wow. he was like trying to force her to get on a scale. Stuff oh my like gosh! That. Yeah, he was he was the king of that stuff. And yeah. then other people, I think he went into war with a bunch of other radio jockeys for the shock value, and he won them all. Hmm. And then he got other guys in trouble mm-hmm. for for doing the exact same thing. They were trying to one up him. It was really? like the stupidest things. He was telling yeah. people these other guys were telling people to go to a church, mm-hmm. and then get naked or have sex in a confession booth in New York or somewhere like, Whoa. like he took, they, the, everybody wanted to take down mm-hmm. Howard Stern for being the most obscene, like these podcast guys. Hmm. And, um, he just came out on top 
you know, as always, because he'll go the extra mile. Shock value. Shock yeah. value. But then later on, he had to come out and, like, he wrote a book and then he apologized and all this stuff. He was, like, on The View or Larry mm. King or something like that. It was, like, early 2010 or something like that. So and now was, he's on one of those TV shows where they, what is it? Like, it's not America's Got Talent? Is that yeah, what it is? That's, those, he's yeah. on that show now. As a judge. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I know him from, is from America's Got Talent. Oh, yeah. No, he know. was pretty obscene. Um, I have, I definitely have my issues with him. But, mm. you know, who would actually be good to talk to is Hayden, because she was on his show several times. Oh. Hayden, if you're watching, <laughs> let's get you on, girl. Hayden Porter. <laughs> we know you. Get your butt on here. She actually messaged me today, so she must have known. <gasps> and I talked about her on one of my other podcast episodes, and she texted me that same day, to, like, too. It was wild. It's like, she's like, what is it, clairvoyant? Yeah. Is that she's, the word? She's connected. <laughs> yes. She can feel it in the air. Yeah. I definitely will reach out to her and see... If she wants to come on and if she wants to talk about her experience on the show. Because yeah. obviously we don't want people to talk about experiences that they don't want to relive if it was negative or anything like that. But um, back to the podcast thing. I actually, I've had an episode that I shot with one of these like podcasters I'm talking about completely get deleted. Um, and they just like, they never reached out to like help promote it or do anything. They didn't even like have it edited. They legit, like I wasted my time driving to their studio film a podcast episode with them and because I didn't give them anything like juicy enough in their opinion they just like never posted it and to me it's like okay it's this whole performative act of oh our podcast is brand new bring your followers and bring all these people to like come watch our show and then when these girls are on their show they make them well, they don't make them do ridiculous things but they dangle the carrot of like oh well the last girl that was on here did this on our show and then if the girl doesn't try to one up this other talent that they had on, they won't air the episode. So it's like you're kind of conflicted in this, do I bend my morals and do things that really don't represent who I am in order for this to be worth my time? And I, it's not like these girls are not consenting to doing these things. It's nothing mm -hmm. like that predatory. But it still is these guys that are fully dressed, that are fully like in their podcast era that are benefiting off of having these these corn stars on their shows. Mm -hmm. And then, like, having them do things that you wouldn't do on any podcast set. Yeah. It's wild to me. <sighs> I guess shock jocks are coming back. I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm very convinced, like, the entire industry is very secular. We're just doing the, the same mistakes we made 20 years ago, but in a slightly different format. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Ugh. I hate it. I hate it here. <laughs> oh. And the worst part is, is like people watch it. Yeah. It's like, it's the same analogy of like when you drive by a car accident. Oh yeah. You, everybody slows down to watch mm -hmm. because you can't look away. Oh yeah. yeah. But what? at what point are we going to keep allowing this behavior to happen? It's like, I don't think enough people are talking about it or mm -hmm. not, not causing a scene or causing an uproar, but at least making saying something about it because if we just keep contributing to this like well it keeps repeating itself that's what history does then it's always going to be this way yeah like i've started which I, my instagram views are in the toilet right now so be sure to go check out my content um i've been doing a lot more of like look how easy it is to edit your body uh hot takes and like promoting that and then also talking about like body hair and like body image and like people calling me fat even though i'm very much so not and just trying to break the mold of, like, we all say that Instagram, we hate it here because it's this, like, highlight reel of your life. And I just one day was like, well, I'm contributing to the problem if I keep having my photos, like, over-edited and I'm only putting, like, the highlights of my life. So I started posting things that I normally wouldn't just to kind of, like, stir it up and get people making their own content that's not highlight reel and, and glamorous and my life is wonderful and it's, it's working. Like, I'm getting way more views on that content, but I'm also being met with a lot of criticism about it. So my point is, is if you're watching this and you're like, yeah, I agree, maybe we should all be posting things that we feel strongly about instead of just being like, oh, well, history repeats itself. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure on that. I know mm -hmm. what some of the videos you've posted, and it's funny because, like, you're, like, not using filters and showing how filters can work for 
changing things dramatically. Yeah. But I'm also like, girl, I'm 40. I need a filter. <laughs> like, I don't wake up gorgeous. And that's like sort of a thing is I, I understand where you're coming from on that. Mm -hmm. And I also feel very uncomfortable about that as well because like realistically we have pretty privilege for sure. And there are people treat you differently because of that. Mm -hmm. You know, unfortunately that's just how our society is. And for some people, like these filters make them feel really good. And right. like, who am I to tell them not to use that or whatever? And I sure as heck don't wake up gorgeous. So I'm like, <laughs> I need that filter before like noon. <laughs> I mean, I agree. Like, I feel like there's some times where I also want to use a filter. My problem isn't using the filter. It's the body modification. That's the big one that I have an issue with where in certain countries, I don't know which ones, I think it's like Australia, they require you to say if a photo is edited or if a video is like edited or like cinched in in certain places. So that way when you're watching it, mm -hmm. like you're not sitting there going like, oh my gosh, that girl is so skinny. I should go on a diet and like not eat today. Like it's like when celebrities say like, I don't have any work done. And then they come out five years later and are like, oh yeah, I got my lips filled and I got Botox and I got this. That's my problem is when you're not disclosing what like the editing or like if you're getting things done and you're a beauty standard for other girls or other women that are watching or men. Um, so that's why I've just started being a little bit more honest about it. Like I even had a talk with my personal photographer and I told him like, Hey, my photos, they look great. Like I love the way you edit them, but I think it's time that we edit them a little less. Cause there was at some points when like my armpits didn't have texture and I was like, okay, we got to work. Like mine are, I have very textured armpits. <laughs> I didn't shave today, so I won't show them right now. But <laughs> I, um, There's a do you have like that. super fetish, like armpit fetish? Kind yes, of? I do. Really? <laughs> like, yes. Look at the texture. <laughs> I do. And they want me to lick my armpit, but I can't reach. My tongue is fat and not long. So <laughs> I do get that a lot. It's funny because I don't think I have any armpit guys mm -hmm. on OF. But tons on Instagram. Anytime I go live on Instagram, they're like, show your armpits. I'm like, what? You're like, okay, $5, please, at least. I'm like, can you go to OF and ask for that? Yeah. <laughs> like, stop going to my free platforms and bugging me for content. There are whole Instagram pages dedicated to armpits. That's so wild. And I can't remember what it's called, but there's one that always reaches out to me and is like, will you give us more free armpit pictures? And I'm like, no. <laughs> no. Uh... Are you a fan of the armpit, Cosmo? <laughs> I'm a 42-year-old man trapped in this new age of things. It's like back in the 90s, like you want to – everybody wanted this one VHS called Faces of Death. It showed you like real that. shit. Yeah? But it was a hard thing to find and get. And it's but also a horrible thing to watch. It's a horrible thing to watch, but people want that shock value. But you just like – like it was just, it was a thing that was not easy to get. Mm -hmm. So pe that's hmm. why I made it popular, but like hush, hush. Now with technology and the internet, just you can, I can find clips of Faces of Death on YouTube. I can I can find that stuff, and I'm like, what What is it? Is it a horror film? It's like real decapitation, shooting, <gasps> and cannibalism, and just the real shit that like crime scenes stuff. Whoa, like that. Yeah, really? Yeah, yeah. And why did it circle around? Just the shock value? It was morbid such, curiosity. Morbid curiosity, but also just like our. What do you what do you call what do you call it? Our our media back then wasn't so vast, mm -hmm. so we got what we were only shown through cable TV and then whatever was that blockbuster video. Mm -hmm. That was our all. That was our only access, and it was word of mouth. Like you see that tape coming out, blah blah blah. Like Pat Manners to the sex tape. That was mm -hmm. a word of mouth. Yeah, and like it got it got it wasn't so viral, but it got viral slowly. Hmm. But like you know, only the right sick minded people knew about these things. Yeah, and I was curious about it, so I was like, "What is this?" My friend got it. We watched it. I was like. Okay, whatever that that happened, but that, mm -hmm. that, that's just me. But now with like technology, it's just internet. It's easy to get anything, and like I want to say, all the six and sickos and weirdos just are, are out and about, and they're with mm -hmm. the public now. It's just like just stay in your basement. But <laughs> but you know, there's yeah. people you can make money off of them, and that's the other sad thing. We're like, I don't know. It's just it's just weird. Yeah. If somebody asked me, if somebody offered me a million dollars to see my feet in my armpit, <laughs> fuck, that's a lot of money. So maybe, uh, yeah. yeah but, but I'm just like, oh my God, can I start all these fans like that? 
<laughs> let, 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 me, let me know in the comments down below. In the comments, let us know. Uh, it's funny anyways. because in a lot of like my OF strip videos, I do very sort of burlesque kind of, you know, novelty dance things. And I'll mm. do those like shoulder licks like like that. I'm like, maybe I need to be doing my pit. Maybe I'm doing yeah. it all wrong. <laughs> do the armpit. I'm doing it all wrong. I just got to get those guys to actually go from Instagram too. <laughs> yeah. Also, speaking of OF, um, one of our, like, soft sponsors is LF, which, if you don't know, is called Loyal Fans, and we both are actually on the platform. We are. Uh, we're technically not funded by them, but they have been somebody who has been working one-on-one -on -one with me to help build my following on there and also giving me a little bit of advice on how to use the platform. They have great discoverability, so if you are looking for a new platform to find some new content creators, highly recommend checking out LF, Loyal Fans, and then looking up us on there. Yeah, definitely. I actually am a huge fan of their interface. Mm -hmm. I love how on some fan pages, like, you just send a message with your video and that's it. But on loyal fans, you can actually put each video in a clip. So if someone missed that message, mm -hmm. you can have it in a history for them to buy at any time. Oh, and wow. Yeah. So they, they've got a really great like clip setup, which I haven't seen on other platforms. Mm -hmm. It's a clip store, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And they have, like you said, the clip store online where you can buy audio messages and video messages. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're busy at an event, like if you're a content creator watching this, you're busy at an event, you don't have time to DM it to everybody. You can like pre put it up on their online store and mm -hmm. then you can have it set to a certain time to drop. And then your fans can go buy it. So love the discoverability. Bit. Blah, blah, blah. Love the discoverability there. So be sure to check out Loyal Fans and look for us on there. Yay. And maybe Cosmo will be there soon. <laughs> sure. With his armpits. With his armpits. <laughs> With my armpits, yes. Is there a type of content that you don't do? It doesn't have to be like extreme or noodle. Um, just in general that like you wish that you've done or explored in or are you just happy with the content that you currently make? So I think as a content creator, like certainly in the adult realm, what's unfortunate about it is you often don't know your limits until you've passed them. Mm -hmm. So I think I stay in a very sort of safe zone and every once in a while I'll venture out a little bit and I'm like, oh, why did I do that? You know, mm -hmm. so I, I don't go too far into things. I kind of wish that this is actually probably a whole nother Delulu thing Ooh. that I could go on a rant about yeah. is prior to um, OF taking off so big, mm -hmm. so many amazing photographers would message me and be like, oh my gosh, I'd love to shoot trade. I've got this great project I'm working on. Let's collaborate. And now all these same photographers think that I've gotten so wealthy off of these websites that they just send me out, not even just their rates, they mm. send me outrageous rates. Mm -hmm. And it's like $3,000 for two hours and you get two edits. It's ridiculous. Oh my gosh, yeah. yeah. And um, I wish that I did more high-end, like and I did a lot of high-end shooting, but yeah. I wish I did more of that mm -hmm. um, because I could not afford prior to OF to not – I, I had to take paid jobs on tours, mm -hmm. and most of that is not going to be your best images. Right. But I wish that I would have done more trade for print and, you know, that sort of thing with things with photographers I really, really wanted to work with mm -hmm. because now it's almost become unattainable. They they think that we're all, like, billionaires, which is crazy. Yeah. I definitely have been seeing a lot of that. But I also, like, think for you what would have been really cool, this is just, like, maybe a YouTube thing you might want to do in the future. I think you should totally have like a segment where you talk about like your closet. Like yeah. I think you have such a vast knowledge on like fashion. Like you know how Cody is making like her motorcycle show on YouTube? Mm -hmm. I would love to see one of you like showing off the like the finds at certain <laughs> events and like yeah. just you, you have so much knowledge in, in fashion that like I would totally watch a TV show where oh, it's like oh, Carlotta's closet and then it's you being like, oh, this is from this show or I got this at this place and then maybe them following you to a yeah, sale. I actually just came up with a fun idea. I'm like, I'm a, I don't know if I should be talking about it, but Ooh. I want to find, because I'm into vintage, mm -hmm. I want to find all the original ads for the clothing Oh, and then compare like 
whether it's a commercial or like a booklet, Mm -hmm. I want to compare that and then wear it and show it off in that way. I think that would be really fun. That'd be cool. Yeah. I'd watch that. Because I haven't really seen much of that, Mm -hmm. but I think that's going to be like a deep dive and probably a lot of work. Also, I saw that you, tangent, um, one girl that I had told you like years ago you should watch and like mimic content wise was Pinup Pixie. Mm-hmm. And then I saw you met her. Yeah. <laughs> that had to be so cool to be like, oh, I watch your stuff. Oh, I, I felt like such a dork because um, I was at Viva Las Vegas mm-hmm. and it's a pinup rockabilly event. I go almost every year mm-hmm. and I was just walking towards her and I'm like, oh my God, I follow you on the interwebs. And she's like, <laughs> oh, Okay, wait, I think I know who you are, too. <laughs> no so, way! Yeah, so we took a picture. Um, I love that. I was hoping I'd run into her again, but she was very busy. It was really busy at Viva. I saw that day, I saw her. I saw Dita Von Tees there. Oh. I, I mean, there's so many amazing performers. Really, really. Uh, Miss Miranda. Oh, wow. I saw a lot of burlesque performers that were just wandering around, so. Is it, I, I don't know much about the event. Is it like a stage show performance, or is oh, it like a shopping event? you should event? totally come. It's in Vegas. You can <clears throat> stay at my house. Okay. Yeah. Um, our friend Chrissy, she yeah. went. She yeah. went to go. She went there. She's like. You'll like it because I like rockabilly style. Mm. She's like, she's like, you'll like it. It's super fun. It's basically like three or four days, mm-hmm. and it's I think it's the biggest pinup rockabilly event in the world. Oh, wow. uh, and yeah. they have a car show. They've mm-hmm. got a burlesque show. Well, they actually have a feature show, mm-hmm. and they also have a competition the next day. Mm. Uh, they they have burlesque bingo, which I knew about that. You from know you. some of the yes. girls in it, like. Um, uh, Miss Vent Youth mm-hmm. is really involved in a lot of it. Miss Vent Youth. Yeah. <laughs> you should have her on the pod, too. <laughs> I know. She's so busy. Yeah. Like, so. she just did a, a that burlesque show that you and I went and saw. Yeah. So yeah. She's, she's hard to tie down. <laughs> <laughs> Literally and figuratively. But, yeah, so um, it, a lot of stuff is going on. The shopping mm-hmm. is great. There is a runway show or fashion show rather it's not really a runway it's more like a stage oh okay which i did this year Mm -hmm. um that was fun and trying to think of what else they do but it's just it's a huge event it's a big pinup event yeah but it's so worth going just for fun and a lot of celebrities and people in the industry do go obviously pinup pixie was there yeah i thought that was so wild when i saw that photo i was like oh my god was she so nice like what's she like (laughs) Um, just because, like, I know she's, like, very similar. Like, you and her have a lot of similarities when it comes to, like, style, fashion. Yeah. And it's funny it's cool because that you met her. I, in my private life, mm. I follow all these, like, vintage groups. And mm-hmm. I'm very, you know, I'm quiet about, like, the things that I'm involved in and mm-hmm. on, like, my Facebook groups or whatever. But I've also seen her using a different name also posting in these oh, groups. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, so she does so. the same thing. Yeah. I love yeah. that though. Yeah. Like you gotta keep keep some anam- anonymity, anonymity, anonymity. <laughs> How do you say the word? I'm not even gonna try. Great. Am- am- an- an- yeah. Anonymity, right? Anonymity. I'm dyslexic. You all know what I mean. <laughs> Sounds like a fatality from Mortal Kombat, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. or it's like the Finding Nemo, anonymity, anonymity. Anyways, <laughs> but um. I just wanted to say thank you so much for coming on yeah, again, course. but don't go away. Well, actually go join us on Patreon because I have some fun questions for you and they're a little spicy. So um, we're going to put them behind a paywall, but be sure to check it out. If you want to see these episodes, it's only $5 on Patreon to see the behind the scenes Q and a, if you want to do $10, you get to ask the questions and every question you turn in gets asked to our guest, no matter how spicy. Um, I do delete one, so that might be a little offensive. So, you know, don't be offensive. Um, so be sure to check us out on Patreon for these spicy questions. And, ooh, after you've released your Delulu, uh, what character do you most relate to on our logo? Oh, I don't know. Maybe. Do you feel like you're a little shy? I like the little yellow one. Yeah. Like a little cat. It's cute. A little shy cat. A little scaredy cat. <laughs> um, I feel like I'm the dog. I'm so mad at those, like, podcaster bros. <laughs> Like, screw you guys. Can't wasting wait till my time. podcast is bigger. Yeah, right? Wasting my time, my energy, my gas. Do you know how expensive gas is out here? I mean, maybe I just had to do something crazier on your podcast. I don't know what it is, though. <laughs> I mean, I should have licked the armpit. That was it. You, you could have licked the armpit on here, you know? Yeah. I'm not doing mine, though, again. I didn't <laughs> shave, so... 
to see her lick her armpit, go to the Patreon. There you go. <laughs> okay, I'll do it there. I'll do it there. Um, Cosmo, who do you relate to? Oh, I'm the bear just steering this whole thing. I'm like, hey, what's going on? Okay, cool. <laughs> I like just rolling the canoe. Yeah. It's fine. Thank you all so much for listening. Be sure to check us out on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Be sure to leave us five stars or all the stars that you can. And we hope that you stay Delulu. And because it's the Salulu. There you go, trying on a new outro. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>